So in this video, we're going to continue our looking at, look at the road to the Texas Revolution. And here we really get into where the fighting really begins, uh, what is considered the beginning of the fighting and the first battle of the Texas Revolution today. So um, if you'll remember, Stephen F. Austin was arrested in, when he went to Mexico uh, City to kind of you know, see what could be done, to see what was going on, to, to kind of lodge the complaints from the Convention of 1833. While he's there, he writes a letter back to um, Texas saying, hey, go ahead and start setting up the state government. Well, that kind of made, that upset St Santa Ana because he's like, I told you, you can't do that. And um, Stephen F. Austin kind of says, go, goes against those wishes. And so it really upset Santa Ana. So St Stephen F. Austin is arrested. Well, when Texans find out about Stephen F. Austin being arrested, they, um, you know, Stephen F. Austin, he has kind of been the voice of moderation. He's been the moderate. And if he is getting arrested by this government, then they don't feel like, then they, they feel like this is probably absolutely definitely unjust. And so um, he once he is finally released, he comes back, he comes to Texas, and he says, you know what, we need to be begin to prepare for war. So the Texas Revolution is similar in a lot of ways to the um, U.S. Revolution, the United States Revolution, and the American Revolution. And so one of the ways that that's similar in that uh, during the summer of 1835, Texans rebelled against Mexico. Well, there was people on both sides in Texas that weren't that didn't support this revolution. Um, and didn't support this fighting against this this country. So that, that's true. Again, both in both sides, they didn't always agree. In both wars, um, there was they were fighting against a, uh, an unjust ruler. In the American Revolution, it was King George III. In the Texas Revolution, it was Santa Anna. So this first battle, the Battle of Gonzales, is the first, first battle of the Texas Revolution. Uh, and what happens is that the, in, in Gonzales, they had a cannon that they had been given by the Mexican government to help to defend themselves against the potential for Native American attacks. Well, the, the Mexican government says, you know what, we don't want that. So that General Martin Perfecto de Cos goes there to collect that and um, get that cannon. They don't want it in the hands of the Texans anymore for obvious reasons, because there's kind of some difficulties been going on and there's been some conflict. And so uh, the Texans aren't going to give it up. They fly the, the famous come and take it flag. Um, when Mexican, sold, Mexican soldiers attacked, the Texans fired their cannons and forced them to retreat. One week, week later, the Texans captured the Mexican garrison at Goliad and defeat the Mexican general Martin Perfo Perfecto de Cos, who retreated um, his men back to San Antonio. So we have the beginning of war. So this new Texas government, we've got a government fighting in Texas revolution had begun. Um, what is the goal? What are they going to do? Is, are they fighting for independence? Are they simply revolting against the leadership of Santa Ana? Well, the two sides agreed on a compromise. There was So that one side wanted independence. One side had just says, no, we're fighting against Santa Ana. So the compromise they come up is we're fighting to get the Mexican Constitution of 1824 put back into use throughout all of Mexico. Um, this ad interim government, this, te this Texas temporary government, um, has President G, uh, G, David G. Burnett as the president, Lorenzo de Zavala is the vice president, and Sam Houston would be in charge of the Texas Army, um, which was going to be difficult to do with no money to pay for it. They're, they're not collecting taxes or things like that, so how are we going to fight this war um, and, and do all of these things? So this is a big problem. Uh, Meanwhile, Stephen F. Austin led a force of 400 volunteers to San Antonio, where the last Mexican army in Texas was located. Um, 800 Mexican soldiers led by General Coase are there, and instead of attacking the city, Austin began a siege where you surround the city, you don't let supplies in, you don't let people out, and basically surrounds them, and that puts them in a difficult, in a difficult situation uh, because they are not getting supplies, and they can run out of food and things of that nature. So in December of 1835, some Texan volunteers that were part of that siege um, decide to attack. Um, they're led by Bid Miley back all the way into the, specifically the Alamo. It was there that General Coase and his soldiers surrendered and promised to leave Texas. Early victories gave the Texans hope that they might win their revolution, and Mexico, however, was not 
finished fighting. And more fighting will definitely be on the way. Um, we're not going to worry about this last slide. Um, it's in your notes as well. We'll talk more about the government falling apart uh, on another video, so don't worry about that. So we're going to finish off there with the siege of San Antonio and uh, the United and and Texas really gaining uh, a foothold in, uh, you know, whereas the Mexican army has been kicked out of all of the different uh, parts of of Texas at this point.